continue on the series of our briefings and the last one for today. I am happy to welcome Mr. J Mustafa Jamilev, the member of the Ukrainian parliament, uh, uh, the leader of Crimean Tatar people, the first uh, chairman of the Majlis of the Crimean Tatar people. We'll be talking about the situation with Crimean Tatars today. What's happening today is the genocide, the repressions, uh, the Crimean Tatars are under the threat of deportation. And I would like to invite uh, Mr. Mustafa to talk about that. Esteemed ladies and gentlemen, in Crimea, uh, most people are talking about the uh, people who are missing as of today, 18 persons uh, disappeared from the beginning of occupation. 18 are missing. The last one uh, was uh, di uh, disappeared uh, two days ago. A person who is 23 is missing. The Federal Security Service uh, denied that they are involved into that, but at the same time in Belogorsk, uh, two were uh, put to Volkswagen, everyone saw that, and the uh, uh, number plate was uh, registered, and these were uh, w the people from the so-called uh, self-defense uh, uh, people. These are those who are retired uh, KGB and uh, intelligence uh, department uh, people. They do that. Uh, and such works and also the dead body which was found on the 15th of March that was also done by them but not a single murder not a single kidnapping has been uh, investigated uh, why that is done that is fighting with those who think differently and also that is to make people fear those who do not accept occupation and those who are ready to uh, fight against the occupational regime. And these are mostly Crimean Tatars uh, and uh, their representatives in the Majlis of Crimean Tatar people. Just during the last week, uh, there were more than 40 uh, searches uh, uh, done in the homes uh, of uh, Crimean Tatars officially. They say that they're looking for weapons and the prohibited literature. That term, prohibited literature, we have forgotten about that. For 25 years almost, we did not know what that is. And now they are restoring the Soviet term. They made a list which is 200 pages long. There are 2,000 uh, uh, names, titles of political and religious literature included into that list. No one keeps this list, and uh, every more or less intelligent person uh, is uh, risking uh, because such searches are conducted uh, with uh, uh, using the physical force uh, about 20, 30, People uh, break into your house and they shout at everyone, all uh, lie on the floor, and that is to intimidate people. Another thing is fines. And uh, they believe that once there were more than three persons who got together and uh, the authorities did not approve that meeting. That is a legal meeting. On the 16th of September, there was a search uh, done in the uh, building of the Majlis, and people get together, the journalists, uh, more than three persons got together. The policeman comes, says that you are uh, participating in a legal meeting, and that's the basis of imposing fine on this person, which is 20, 40,000 rubles. And with the economic situation, which is now in Crimea, that is quite a big sum of money. More than 2,000 people who came to meet me at the border on the 3rd of May, and those who crossed the border between the occupied part of Crimea and the continental part, they 
consider that to be illegal crossing of border and uh, uh, most of them uh, had to pay fines and this way they are trying to oppress uh, people. There are also rumors about possible deportation of Crimean Tatar people. They, uh, such rumors are gaining quite uh, real features. Uh, realistic features there are uh, uh, there is a suspicion that the so-called uh, consensus which is uh, planned uh, to be held uh, at uh, uh, Crimean Peninsula could become the basis for deportation of some people uh, oh, in the uh, when speaking at the United Nations, the Minister of Foreign Affairs Lavrov said that Russia is not planning to organize deportation of Crimean Tatars. But a few months before Crimea was occupied, Putin was saying that it's absurd to say that Russia wants to get Crimea. We have no problems, especially around territory with Ukraine, but what Russian officials are saying doesn't mean anything. Sometimes it means quite the opposite. So that is why we're quite concerned. Concerned Now, they offer young people, uh, they, they give the, um, uh, the, the uh, they uh, are now sending the uh, notes to the young people and they are trying to enroll the Crimean Tatars to the army um, and uh, these people will not of course go to Russian army they know that and the task of the occupational forces is if these people will go to the army, they will be taken outside of Crimea to Murmansk, to Caucasus, or to fight against their own country, against Ukraine. But uh, mostly uh, they believe that young people and their families, uh, they hope that this way they will uh, leave the territory of Crimea because they do not want to go to the army. And that is... Uh, will be like a voluntarily deportation from Crimea. I was talking about that in many places for many times, and this occupation of Crimea reminds of the first of, uh, occupation in 1873. They did not deport then because there was no railway even, but they were creating such conditions. Uh, they were taking away the land, they were killing the leaders, and people themselves uh, were forced to leave the territory of Crimea. Now, in Turkey, there are 10 times more in Crimean Tatars living than in Crimea itself. And that is the situation which we see in Crimea. The general atmosphere uh, is uh, such that um, mm, there's no uh, big enthusiasm supporting uh, Russia now. Most people feel fear. The whistling is uh, enormous uh, because uh, the people are um, afraid even to mention the name of Putin in some negative context. Uh, and uh, people are preferring not to discuss any political topics uh, with the exception of Crimean Tatars who do discuss that. That's the atmosphere and the social economic situation has worsened. Uh, the salaries, the pensions were raised, but the prices uh, went up even more, especially uh, taking into account the exchange rate of ruble, which is now more than 40 rubles per dollar. The situation will just deteriorate. But if R Ukraine stops supplying electricity and water, and water and electricity are supplied uh, 80% of that is supplied uh, to Crimea from Ukraine. Then Crimea will be left without water and in darkness. And if the food supplies uh, stop, uh, if you look at the highway Krasnoperekopsk-Karmiansk, you will see 
uh, several kilometers of trucks with food products from Ukraine to Crimea. For me, it's just uh, a mystery uh, because now using this, uh, either they are trying to earn some more money or is there some agreement between some companies? Because even from Crimea, they tell me, why are you feeding the occupants? And uh, they also say that people are in a very difficult situation there and they need uh, some humanitarian assistance. And they say that the main assistance would be that uh, Crimea should be freed from occupation. And uh, people, when they call me from Crimea, they ask, why don't you stop supplying water and electricity? It is impossible to improve the situation there, especially with human rights. We are in the country where there's a toilet. We, we happen to be in the state where there is a totalitarian system of uh, administration. It will never be better there than in Russia. But what's happening with human rights in Russia, we all know. It is this is the Soviet system, but the uh, worst version of it. So. In the Soviet time, uh, people would not at least disappear like that. In Stalin's times, it was different, but after him, uh, Khrushchev, Brezhnev, Gorbachev, it never happened. That was a procedure. People would be arrested, apprehended, um, then uh, tried, and of course, all the uh, uh, dissidents would go to the um, uh, to the. Uh, prisoners' camps, but it, they wouldn't do it like that in a clandestine fashion. Uh, so I mentioned that in Strasbourg three days ago, uh, we cannot uh, do that with half measures. Uh, nobody can go there, no international organization. Even if we uh, pay some attention to that lawlessness, we will at least be able to uh, somehow allay, mitigate this uh, regime. That uh, the only and the cardinal uh, medicine is uh, liberation from, from occupation. Uh, Georgian of so Madame Levan, tell us please uh, how, how many Crimean Tatars, according to your calculations, uh, 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 disappeared. Uh, Gaida's mother uh, called me. Uh, I wanted to ask you, she approached President of Ukraine about her daughter's disappearance. Uh, and. Uh, she was told that the president is well aware of this fact. Is it true? Is this problem being looked into by the president? For example, um, we see eight people on uh, the Crimean Tatars, but there are uh, people of other nationality. Uh, even if you go to a village where somebody I was uh, killed, uh, like Rishat Ametov. Uh, um, the, even the neighbors are afraid of saying uh, anything. But we have figures, like from the beginning of the um, out, outset of the occupation, we have this number of eight. So we have also informants from the federal. Uh, service uh, of security. The majority of such people missing are Crimean Tatars. Uh, about guide, uh, um, uh, about six weeks ago, somebody approached me and said that the terrorists wanted 50,000 euros for uh, to reveal to release her. Well, we have no such months. I never had, but this is. Um, and this is uh, um, not clear whether that information was correct or was it just extortion. And uh, uh, she uh, went to Luhansk Oblast to provide some humanitarian assistance and was apprehended by terrorists. We cannot find any trace of her. 
as of now. Uh, Dmitry Peripolitz, uh, Ukrainian News. Do you plan anything, any activities to stop uh, supplies of cheap foodstuffs, electricity, and sweet water for the Crimean population to appreciate all the niceties of the uh, Russian rule? I talked to Valentin Novaychenko about that. We had uh, a similar conversation with the president. They all agree that there um, something should be done. Uh, there's no border there. Let's start with that. Uh, any truck, any lorry, you pay 2,000 hryvnias and at the border so-called from both sides. Uh, the uh, Russian, Russian controllers also take uh, bribes and hryvnias. So it could do anything. And the mon our people from the Crimea announced that 90% of the lorries with the uh, foodstuffs, they do not stay in the Crimea through the uh, by uh, ferry they go to Russia. They sell them there because uh, the uh, prices are um, of a different order in Russia. So people uh, make seven to eight thousand dollars on each truck. So uh, two to four hryvnias for a bribe mean nothing. So many business agents in the Crimea, and also there are some lorries uh, that are uh, controlled by uh, that goblin, Mr. Aksiono, is his alias. And uh, um, there are some um, lorries uh, that are uh, controlled by the business agents of Africa, so the security service should uh, look into the issue and uh, decide why this is happening. And uh, this should not be a penetrable border. One thing is uh, foodstuffs, but uh, you can use such lorries so, uh, for different things. It's not safe for the country, after all. Are there any questions, further questions from the first row? Sergei Kutnikov, man in form. Uh, Mr. Jamilov, uh, what uh, is uh, your opinion of the um, likelihood of uh, invasion of the Russian forces from the Crimea and uh, with a full blockade uh, of the peninsula if the water does not come? This is an environmental catastrophe, no electricity, no foodstuffs. Will be a, uh, there will be a big scale or final crisis for the dwellers. Uh, and to speed up uh, bringing the Crimea back to Ukraine, this blockade is necessary. It should be complete. And uh, the threat of a military invasion, and I have asked already. Uh, Mr. Lysenko, Colonel Lysenko about it. So they have enough means and capabilities to deter the aggression, they say. What do you think? I don't think we have enough uh, capabilities to deter the aggression uh, because the situation the Ukrainian army is quite different from what we had immediately after Yanukovych's escape. Um, but immediately after that, uh, we had that um, a close meeting of uh, the parliament, the Ministry of Defense said that we had 40,000 people, um, out of which ready for combat were 6,000 people. That was the situation with the army then. Now it's getting better, uh, but in the peninsula, according to NATO information, they have about 40,000 men of the Russian armed forces and from the point of view of the Russian, the state of the art, military equipment of the grads, smells, books, and all that stuff. Why uh, it is not blocked? Uh, if we block uh, and stop supplies, they will have uh, more incentives to capture Kherson Oblast and get, get the distribution points for electric supplies and water. It's not just for the Crimea, but if they uh, somehow um, uh, 
compromise that uh, that will also be uh, very different uh, for the rest of the territory of Ukraine. There will be some implications. Uh, I'm not told that openly, but there are some apprehensions that the Russian forces will immediately attack the mainland. And also in the Russian Federation, they understand that this will happen or may happen any day now. So the Russian strategy, we can uh, see it uh, from Mariupol. They are making the corridor towards uh, along the sea, along the shore, to connect uh, the uh, uh, so-called republics with the Crimean. And so um, no, the Kerch uh, ferry won't be available in winter season, uh, so there will be this uh, imminent threat. Uh, and uh, also, um, when I met the head of the uh, general staff and the president, I mentioned that all the forces should be focused on the southern border of our country. But we have what we have, and I believe that with every day the situation will be improving talking about strengthening our defense, but we are not strong enough now to uh, counteract the possible aggression from uh, the south. And the first question about creating autonomy in Kherson region. A month, a month and a half ago, there was a press conference and there was the information that possibly there will be the autonomy of Crimean Tatars set up in Kherson Oblast and also the situation around your son. What is the situation with that? Uh, the issue about setting up uh, Kherson, uh, in, uh, setting up the autonomy of Crimean Tatars in Kherson uh, uh, region, the, we we did not, we were not talking about that. In Kherson region, there are 12,000 Crimean Tatars living. These are the Crimean Tatars who were coming to Crimean Soviet times. They were sent back, and they were not going back to the exile, but they were settling close to Crimea in Kherson region, uh, in Krasnodar uh, of Russia, and, uh, and now they are still there. So it was about having part of Kherson region and to um, get it uh, um, uh, joined to the Republic of Crimea and to uh, organize the administration of uh, Crimean Tatar uh, uh, administration, the, the um, administration of the Free Crimea to set up near Genichesk. And that is the idea which the president liked and others. but. Uh, also, that's the norm of the Constitution. According to the Constitution, this autonomous republic is uh, uh, set up within the limits of the Crimean Peninsula. So if uh, we want to change it, uh, that means that for that, uh, there should be the amendment introduced into the Constitution. And for that, we need more than 300 votes in the parliament, and it's impossible in the current parliament. So it all depends on how we'll be able to reinforce ourselves in military sense. If we create such a free zone of Crimean autonomy, then Russians will want to occupy that part. And whether we will be able to defend it, it's another issue. As to my son, you know that uh, on the 28th of May, the tragedy happened uh, in my home. My son shot. Uh, uh, at the uh, friend of our uh, family, almost the member of our fa family, that was a lethal shot, which was qualified as the murder. Later, the investigatory bodies qualified it as uh, the killing uh, because uh, of not careful uh, uh, using the weapons, uh, but uh, during Yanukovych, uh, uh, it was different. Yanukovych was trying to use this situation to bargain with me. 
the um, uh, intermediary from the Yanukovych was telling me that the son will be liberated if I leave from the Batkivshina faction and if I uh, join the party of regions, not just the party of regions, they were creating some new party. It wasn't uh, the party of power, no of opposition. They even showed me the program of the party. Democracy, freedom was there. And they um, uh, were saying that they see me in this party. And they said that my family affairs are my family affairs. And politics is a different thing. And save us Allah. Uh, save uh, uh, Allah, Ukrainian people from the party which starts uh, its forming from such steps. Uh, and then they requalified uh, this uh, accusation against the sun into more serious accusation. Now, after the occupation, according to all the rules existing in the world, uh, the son was to be transferred to Ukrainian side, irrespective of what he did, because that was uh, uh, the action uh, against Ukrainian citizen on the territory of Ukraine by Ukrainian courts. And they now are trying to oppress me. They say that the son will be at home tomorrow if I make this or that statement. And such statements will never be made by me. So now the son was transferred to Krasnodar, to Russian Federation, for me not to have any opportunity to see him. And they believe that this way they will force us to make statements that they would like us to make. At the same time, they refuse the lawyers in access to my son. And they say that they will appoint their own lawyer. I believe he will be the one from the Federal Security Service. And we now hired another different lawyer from Moscow. So today, there is the decision by the investigatory bodies of Ukraine, of investigatory bodies of Ukraine, that this is the killing because of uh, incareful um, use of weapons. And according to that, the son is to be liberated. According to the European Court on Human Rights, the son is to be liberated, but Russia does what it wants, and they do not take uh, all these uh, things uh, into account. Please tell us what is the status of the Majlis of the Crimean Tatar people, and uh, how important it is for Crimean Tatars for this organization to exist normally and to operate after the search on the, which was held on the 16th of September. It's not just the office of uh, Majlis of Crimean Tatar people in uh, Simferopol, but uh, the offices all over the territory of Crimea are closed and uh, sealed. And the accusation is quite interesting. Formally, they say that the search is being conducted because there is a decision uh, of the court of uh, Simferopol, uh, and uh, there's some case against uh, uh, some uh, uh, organization. And uh, basically, they say there's this ruling of the court. But then we find out that the sitting of the court wasn't held then, because the search was held on the 16th of September, but the court had its sitting a week later. So basically, these people were uh, searching uh, in accordance with the decision, which hasn't been passed yet. But then uh, there's this uh, uh, case filed. Uh, against the organization which was registered uh, at the address Zhitkova 40, but they are located uh, in a different building. And the director of this organization says, but both buildings are ours. Uh, the tax inspection of Ukraine has been uh, uh, checking it many times, uh, but they still use it as a uh, Pretext and the second pretext that they use why the president of uh, 
the foundation of Crimea in Crimea is a foreign citizen, and this foreign citizen is myself, and I'm the person who's prohibited to enter the territory of the cr Crimea. And for them, that is the basis to arrest all our assets, to open all our safes, and to uh, confiscate everything. And first of all, the information database. The task is uh, to paralyze uh, the activity of the representative body of Crimean Tatar uh, people. And the action of state that there's no such body as the Majlis of Crimean Tatar people. The Soviet Tatars, the Soviet powers, uh, power were also trying to liquidate uh, the national movement of Crimean Tatars because they were saying that it doesn't exist, but the Crimean Tatar movement does exist and Majlis will continue to function. We now decide on having Kurultai, the National Congress of the uh, Crimean Tatars, and Kurultai is 250 delegates who will then elect the Majlis. Uh, but now there is the threat that, well, first of all, to have Kurultai on the occupied territory, there's no sense. Uh, the Congress cannot be held under the, uh, with, with the machine guns pointed at you. And the decision was made to have this National Congress outside of Crimea, in Kherson or in Kiev. Occupational authorities are against that. And then the second option is maybe in Istanbul. But again, in Istanbul, if uh, some uh, agreement is reached between Erdogan and Putin that these delegates will be allowed back to Crimea, that when the delegates are returning back to Crimea, there will be nothing done to them. And if the Congress is held on the territory of continental part of Ukraine, if they are not allowed back, that, that this very big uh, possibility that they will not be allowed back. But uh, again, after this uh, uh, Congress on the territory of Turkey in Istanbul, again, there's no uh, guarantee that the delegates will be allowed to enter Crimea. Because if some decisions are made there which uh, Russian authorities do not like, then they may change their uh, decision even if they first uh, say that they will let people back. So recently there was a statement made by the Majlis of Crimean Tata people. We participated in this meeting over Skype and the meeting was in Crimea and there was an address uh, passed uh, in relation to repressions against uh, uh, Crimean Tatars from uh, occupational authorities. So in this statement, we talk about necessity of uh, having the special meeting of the United Nations on Crimean Tatar people issue, because that is uh, the people which is now under the threat of deportation and genocide and the uh, human rights of the citizens of this nationality are uh, violated. And the second one is uh, the address to Islamic organization, which unites 56 uh, states so that they also uh, take some measures against that international hooligan. Uh, from Al Jazeera, I have uh, several questions to you. First of all, the Crimean Tatars who are missing, you say that there are eight of them. Did they, uh, are they missing? Can you say that they are missing because of their political views? And the second question, you say, that the agreement uh, is required between uh, Erdogan and Istanbul for the cruel tie to take place in uh, uh, Istanbul. Are you talking about that with uh, Erdogan? The people were missing, uh, were, were kidnapped because of political reasons. We have no uh, doubts in that. The first one who was kidnapped and uh, killed, Rishat Akhmetov, he was killed. Uh, 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 and we found his body in absolutely different place. 
uh, his uh, uh, guilt was when the green man uh, started to appear in the streets. He went to the square in Simferopol. He was uh, uh, with the Ukrainian flag, and he said, uh, uh, occupants go away. And in YouTube, you can see how the so-called the units of self-defense take him into the car and take him away, and then his dead body was found. Are the people who are missing, one of them, this information, that his initials, mm, there was uh, an investigation of a case about so-called uh, 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 acts of terrorism in Crimea. That is uh, uh, the um, uh, that is related to uh, the. Um, uh, this uh, uh, director uh, uh, who was con arrested and uh, uh, their initials were mentioned in uh, this case. Uh, others who we know and who were arrested, they were also active and they participated in organization Ukrainian Choice. Uh, they had a very active uh, position and there's one young man who they kidnapped uh, in Karasi Bazar, which in Russian language is called Belozorsk. He participated in military actions in Syria. And uh, the Assad regime is the ally of Moscow. So probably we believe that the reason is that he participated in that war. And the second question. You said that uh uh, the uh, the Congress of Kurultadi, yes, Erdogan, Erdogan's choice. Uh, I had no um, conversation with the Erdogan. I uh, attended the inauguration instead of Mr. Poroshenko. He could not attend it because he had the um, National Security and Defense Council then. And he wanted me to stand in for him. I had a meeting with Mr. Erdogan. And we discussed the situation in Ukraine briefly and um, uh, agreed that we would meet uh, at some late opportunity to discuss it more detail. In a couple of days, I'll be in Ankara and I'll discuss this issue with him. Uh, uh, I have this question on the uh, 29th of uh, September, Dema Asamov. Uh, he was found in Eupatoria dead today. He was kidnapped on the 29th. On the 27th of September, <laughs> two Crimean Tatars disappeared. What's their destiny? Uh, I have no such information. Uh, in the morning, I um, browsed uh, everywhere. Maybe I have received the SM, uh, a text message to that effect. Yes, there are some apprehensions that they will kill or they kidnapped. They killed them the second. On the 27th of September, there were some reports on two people kidnapped. Yes, on the 27th, two young people uh, were um, kidnapped from uh, uh, Islam of Tibet and Jafar of Islam. And uh, they were kidnapped. And four days later, another person disappeared. That's true. Destiny unknown. I would like to thank Mustafa Jamilou. Jamilou.